Unitree's humanoid robot just went viral for all the wrong reasons. What started as a normal training session inside a robotics lab turned into one of the most hilarious accidents the internet has seen. At the same time, as Jim Fan was discussing NVIDIA's robotics future, Elon Musk jumped in, tweeting, Optimus Gen 3 is an exquisite work of art, and in Shenzhen, an AI companion with synthetic skin is about to blur the line between machine and human connection. Now, let's start with the fail that made the entire internet burst out laughing. The Unitree G1 is one of China's most advanced humanoid robots, built to copy human motion with near-perfect precision. But during one training session, that precision turned into pain. Inside a robotics lab, an engineer suited up in a motion capture system to teach the G1 new movements. The setup was simple. Every time he moved, the robot would do the same in real time. The goal was to help the G1 learn complex balance and coordination, the kind needed for martial arts style stances and quick reflexes. But one small mistake changed everything. As the session started, the engineer lifted his leg to demonstrate a front kick. The G1 mirrored the move exactly. The problem? Both were facing the same direction, not opposite each other. So when the man kicked forward, his own foot swung straight up and struck him right in the groin. He collapsed instantly. And here's where it got hilarious. The G1, doing what it was programmed to do, copied his reaction perfectly. It bent forward in the same motion, as if sharing the pain. The whole lab burst into laughter. And within hours, the video hit social media and exploded worldwide. But beneath the comedy, is a reminder of how advanced Unitree's robots have become. The G1 has already stunned the internet with its kung fu style demos, spinning kicks, flips, and lightning fast moves that prove just how fluid its mechanics really are. It's not a joke robot. It's a serious piece of technology priced at around $16,000, used for AI training and education. Still, this incident shows something deeper. When a robot mirrors us too well, even a simple kick can turn into a perfect storm of precision, timing, and pure comedy. And when we talk about advanced robots, we can't forget Tesla's Optimus. Elon Musk dropped a short reply on X that hit like a thunderclap. Tesla Optimus Gen 3 is an exquisite work of art. And if you're thinking that's just hype, look closer, because that one line is basically Tesla telling the world, this robot is moving into a new class. First, work of art isn't only about how Optimus looks. It's about what Optimus can do with control and precision. Tesla is pushing dexterity hard. Optimus Gen 3 is described as having 22 degrees of freedom in the hand, getting close to human-level arm capability for fine tasks like uncorking a bottle. That kind of finger control is not a party trick. It's the difference between a robot that can only grab boxes and a robot that can handle real tools, real parts, and real mess. But here's the crazy part. Optimus isn't meant to rely on rigid scripts. The approach described is vision-based learning, using human video data. So Optimus can pick up skills in a more flexible way. That's how Tesla is aiming for a robot that adapts, instead of freezing the moment the environment changes. And don't just stare at the art label. Focus on what the design enables. Reliable movement, safe handling, and repeatable work. Now, You've probably seen other humanoids flexing athletic moves online. Unitree's G1 has shown kung fu style kicks, spins, and even aerial flips in a recent demo. And figures humanoid has been shown doing quick starts, sharp breaking, and even running in earlier clips. So the bar is rising fast. Musk calling Optimus Gen 3 art is Tesla's way of saying, this isn't only about stunts. This is about a robot built for useful capability. And by the way, Optimus Gen 3 is getting close. And if you're excited about it, make sure to subscribe because we'll be covering it the moment it drops. Tesla's stated goal is mass production in 2026, starting inside Tesla factories, with the potential to scale to huge numbers after that. But autonomy in real, chaotic places is still the hardest problem. So the real question for you is simple. When Optimus Gen 3 finally shows consistent real-world work, will work of art feel like an understatement? And just when you think that's impressive, we still haven't moved on from what Figure 03 did this Christmas. Figure AI's latest humanoid, Figure 03, showed what full autonomy really looks like. And it happened in a simple, real-world setting. 
in a short clip shared by CEO Brett Adcock. He speaks directly to the robot. Where were you built, he asks. The humanoid answers clearly. I was built right here in San Jose, California. Then comes another question. Which generation are you? Figure 03 replies that it's the third generation, calling itself the best because it has the most advanced features. But here's the interesting part. This wasn't a scripted Q&A. When Adcock asked the robot to hand him a medium and then a large shirt from different baskets, figure 03 scanned the scene, identified each basket correctly, picked the right shirt, and handed it over smoothly. No joystick, no hidden human operator. It was running fully autonomous vision, reasoning, and manipulation through figure AI's Helix model, a system where vision, language, and physical movement work as one continuous loop. Instead of separate modules, the robot did pause before responding. About two to three seconds. That delay caught attention online, with users comparing it to dial-up internet. But that small pause reveals one of the toughest challenges in humanoid robotics, speech latency. Even when robots understand and move perfectly, human-like conversation speed is still hard to match. Technically, figure 03 is a big leap. It's lighter than previous models, covered with mesh fabric and foam padding for safety, and built for household pick-and-place tasks. It can start, stop, and turn quickly, even run at roughly four to six miles per hour. It recharges wirelessly through its feet, delivering around five hours of operation per charge. So yes, it still thinks for a second before answering. But for a robot that talks, sees, and acts entirely on its own, that pause might just be the sound of the future catching up. In China, Shenzhen-based IO technology is doing something most robotics companies have only dreamed of, bringing the idea of an AI companion from the screen into real life. We've seen expressive robots before. Omeka's facial precision, Sophia's interviews, but IO's project, called Eva.i, goes further. It's not just about appearance, it's about presence. Eva.i is a humanoid robot built to move, breathe, and react like a living being. You can wake Eva.i with a simple touch. The robot blends a physical body with a virtual avatar app, combining vision, sound, and touch with emotional understanding. Eva.i reads tone, expressions, and gestures, reacting not to what you say, but how you say it. What makes this robot so different? is its synthetic bionic skin. The outer layer keeps a steady warmth near 37 degrees C, powered by graphene temperature control, while a flexible electronic layer detects pressure and subtle shifts, replicating the sensation of real human contact. Even the breathing motion and micro-expressions are synchronized, designed to make interaction feel startlingly human. The company calls this concept the fourth relationship, an emotional bond without judgment or rejection a companion meant to support emotional independence, not replace people. Privacy is handled with local encryption, edge processing, and even a detachable camera for safety. Eva.i will first appear through a Kickstarter launch with just 200 limited units before moving to global release in February 2026. While IO hasn't revealed the exact price yet, this will likely be one of the most premium companion robots ever offered to the public. A futuristic blend of empathy design, and embodied AI that could redefine what human-robot connection feels like. Would you ever be comfortable forming an emotional connection with an AI companion like this? Or should that line never be crossed? Curious how you see this future. In China, a new shape-shifting robot has just been unveiled, one that can change its body in real time. And UB Tech quietly crossed a line most companies haven't reached yet. Their 1,000th humanoid robot rolled off the production floor, setting a new benchmark for large-scale deployment. In a lab, a small humanoid robot went head-to-head -head with a human in badminton, holding its ground rally after rally. On December 18th, LimX Dynamics introduced a robot called Tron O2. The central idea was simple but risky, a robot that can change its body in real time, not through software, but through physical reconfiguration. Shapeshifting robots sound impressive, but in practice, most robots are locked into one body, one role, and one set of limits. Once the hardware is built, flexibility usually ends. So when Limex Dynamics introduced TRON-02 as a robot that can physically reconfigure itself, the real question wasn't how it looks. It was whether that flexibility survives real-world stress. 
Because changing form isn't just modular parts, it's balance, it's control logic, it's safety systems that don't fall apart the moment the robot moves differently than expected. That's exactly where most modular robots fail. Tron Zero Two avoids that trap by being designed around a true tri-form architecture from the start. The same core system can operate as a dual arm manipulation platform, a wheeled leg mobile system, or a full bipedal walker. This isn't a cosmetic swap. Each form is meant to handle a different class of tasks, from precise manipulation to terrain navigation, without breaking the control stack underneath. But flexibility alone doesn't mean much if the robot can't handle real load. And this is where Limex Dynamics chose a very bold way to prove their point. In one demonstration, Tron Zero Two appears without legs, suspended only by its arms. It grips a gymnastic ring, the kind used in strength training, and hangs freely in the air. At first, the test looks controlled and simple. Two water bottles are attached to the robot's body. Tron Zero Two pulls up. Each lift looks deliberate, almost calm, like the robot is being warmed up rather than tested. Then the moment changes. A young adult woman sits down on a seat that is connected to Tron Aero 2's body, her full weight now hanging beneath the robot. And then Tron Aero 2 pulls up again, lifting the entire woman off the ground using only its arms. No legs, no external support. Just controlled, repeatable strength. And once you accept that strength, the next limitation becomes control. Advanced robots don't fail because they lack power. They fail because humans can't interact with them cleanly. Delay ruins coordination. Even small latency breaks manipulation, especially in research environments where precision matters. Tron Zero Two addresses this with ultra-low latency teleoperation, officially rated at around 100 milliseconds. That means when a researcher moves, the robot responds almost instantly. No lag-induced hesitation, no delayed correction. It feels direct, and that matters when the goal is training embodied intelligence, not just moving hardware. But Limex Dynamics didn't stop at control. They looked at the workflow problem, too. Most robotics labs don't struggle with robots. They struggle with fragmentation. Data collection in one place, annotation somewhere else, training on a another machine, deployment through a different system. Tron Zero Two collapses that entire pipeline into a native vision language action platform. Data collection, cleaning, training, inference, and task management all live inside the same environment. Limex even claims that new users can start working with VLA models in just two hours, not weeks. And that design choice leads to something unexpected. Visually, Tron Zero Two doesn't look like a humanoid robot at all. It looks like a modern desktop PC tower. That decided to grow legs. Online, people immediately noticed. Comments started rolling in. I didn't know I needed a PC with legs until now. It looks like someone's gaming PC walked off the desk. A PC case learned how to rollerblade. It's funny, but it's also accurate. Tron Zero Two doesn't pretend to be human. It looks like what it actually is, a developer machine with mobility. A computer-first platform that just happens to move through the world. And that design philosophy shows again in motion. The robot demonstrates controlled dynamic movements, including complex transitions that demand tight coordination across multiple joints. These aren't flashy stunts for attention. They're proof that the control system stays stable even when movement gets aggressive. And in another factory in China, UB Tech quietly crossed a line most humanoid companies haven't even approached yet. The company completed production of its 1,000th Walker S2 humanoid robot. Not promised units. Real robots built inside a working factory. More than half of them are already delivered and operating. That number matters because humanoid robotics doesn't fail on intelligence. It fails on repeatability. Building one robot is engineering. Building a thousand is an industrial discipline. And UB Tech isn't slowing down. The company has openly stated its target, 10,000 humanoid robots by 2026. That's not a research goal. That's a supply chain goal. It implies standardized parts, validated assembly lines, and robots that don't need constant babysitting. Of course, scale invites scrutiny. When UB Tech released a polished video showing rows of Walker S2 robots being delivered, skepticism erupted. Brett Adcock, the CEO of Figure, publicly suggested the footage looked like CGI. Too clean, too synchronized, too perfect. Instead of debating online, UB Tech responded the hard way. They released a behind-the-scenes video shot in a single drone take. No music, no cuts, no cinematic polish. Just raw factory footage showing robots moving, loading, and operating in real conditions. The message was clear. These robots are not renders. They're inventory. But Walker S2's most important breakthrough isn't production numbers. It's uptime. One of the biggest hidden costs in robotics is charging. Robots stop. Humans wait. Work halts. 
Walker S2 removes that bottleneck with something the industry hasn't seen before, autonomous battery swapping. When power runs low, the robot navigates to a station, removes its depleted battery using its own arms, installs a fresh one, and resumes work. No human intervention, no shutdown, no dead time. With a dual battery system, Walker S2 can operate continuously, effectively 24 hours a day. So far, robots have been working. Now, one of them decided to play. In a Chinese lab, Phibot C1 went head-to-head -head with a human in badminton, matching pace shot after shot. Watching it play, you'd think it had been practicing for a medal. The Phibot C1 demo looks playful. A small humanoid robot rallies with a human opponent on a badminton court. No protective cages, no pauses, just back and forth motion. But what makes this moment historic is what isn't happening. There is no teleoperation, no slowed down footage, no humans pulling strings behind the scenes. The robot is making decisions on its own, in real time. Badminton is a brutal test for robots. The shuttlecock changes speed, direction, and spin unpredictably. Reaction windows are measured in fractions of a second. Even humans struggle to read it consistently. To survive that chaos, the Flybot C1 relies on autonomous anticipation. It doesn't wait for the shuttlecock to arrive. It predicts where it will be, how fast it's moving, and how much time remains before impact. Then commits its entire body to the response. This is real-time sparring not scripted motion. The robot shifts its stance, rotates its torso, adjusts its footwork, and swings with human-like timing. Movements feel natural because they're learned, not animated. There's no visible hesitation, just continuous flow. And unlike humans, the C1 doesn't tire. Performance stays constant, reaction stays sharp, precision doesn't fade, rally after rally, the robot delivers the same output without fatigue, frustration, or error accumulation. Surrounding the court is another clue to what's happening. A large metal scaffold holds dozens of cameras tracking the shuttlecock in three-dimensional space. This isn't decoration, it's perception infrastructure. The environment feeds the robot exact position and velocity data, allowing it to respond faster than human reflexes ever could. But the most important detail is philosophical. The Phibot C1 isn't trying to look impressive. It's trying to feel alive. When the robot reacts instantly, adjusts mid-motion, and recovers naturally, something clicks. This isn't task automation anymore. This is embodied intelligence responding to a human in a shared physical space. And if robots can now react, predict, and move like this in controlled spaces, Japan is already asking what happens when that intelligence leaves the lab and enters everyday life.